Hi everyone, welcome to English Digest. I am Cat, and I am Pat. And today we are looking at one of our travel articles. Now nobody's traveling much these days, but we can still dream, can't we? Yeah, we can. We can do virtual travel. Exactly.、So、this is your travel for this month. Uh huh. You're going to Budapest. Yeah, Budapest or Budapest, as some people might say, but in Hungarian they make a sh with the s, so we say Budapest. The Paris of the East, as they call it.、Hmm. Yeah, it's not a city I've been to. I haven't been much to the eastern part of Europe. I've been to、uh, Dubrovnik down、Ooh. in Croatia,、um, but that's about as far of of that much of the world of Europe as I've seen. Did、oh, you ever、yeah. go that far? Um, no, I think as far east as I've been in Europe is the west of Germany, so、mm -hmm. uh, not too far. Well, or Italy, but、um, still, that's not Eastern Europe.、Um, so I would like to see more of Central or Eastern Europe. I think Hungary is considered kind of the western edge of Eastern Europe,、mm. um, but. I've heard some great things about it culturally, architecturally. You know, seems like a wonderful place to go. Well, let's learn all about Budapest by reading through today's article. When it comes to European cities, many travelers first think of Rome, Paris, Berlin, or Barcelona. But look a little further east. And you'll find the Hungarian metropolis known as the Paris of the East, Budapest. This city abounds with ancient history, modern culture, and stunning architectural marvels you won't want to miss. A perfect place to start a tour of Budapest is Castle Hill, crowned by the massive Buda Castle. This was once the site of an older fort that protected the city against attacks by Mongol and Tatar forces. Hidden beneath the modern palace is an underground labyrinth, which originally served as a network of bomb shelters and cellars. It's recommended that tourists explore this dark maze of tunnels on a tour lit exclusively by oil lamps. With its neo-Gothic dome and spires challenging the sky, the Hungarian Parliament Building is one of the most majestic sights in Budapest. It was inaugurated on the city's 1,000-year anniversary in 1896, and boasts hundreds of rooms as well as Hungary's crown jewels. For a splendid example of neo-Romanesque construction, head to Fisherman's Bastion, one of Budapest's most popular tourist sites. A bronze statue of Hungary's first king, Saint Stephen, can be found there, along with superb views of the Danube River. That streams through the city. If you're feeling starved after all that sightseeing, the lively Central Market Hall, with its gleaming tiled roof, should be next on your list. Its vendors offer various traditional Hungarian delights, like sausages, goulash, and dough-based treats called langos. Nearby are Budapest's renowned Turkish bathhouses, the Rudas Bath and Gellert Spa. Have delighted visitors with the medicinal spring waters for centuries. A soak in one of these baths makes for the perfect way to unwind at the end of a day out in dynamic Budapest. So that's our article, and we've got plenty to see and talk about. If you go to Budapest,、mm -hmm. lots of stuff.、Um, it may not be the most obvious choice if you guys were planning a trip to Europe sometime down the line. Like many people, you might go with this first sentence idea. When it comes to European cities, many travelers first think of Rome, Paris, Berlin, or Barcelona.、Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is saying when you think about where am I going to go, what's a great place to visit. What are some famous European cities?、Mm -hmm. You kind of think of the big ones. You maybe throw in somewhere like London in there、right. as well, and you think like, okay, that's one of the big famous places. I've got to visit there sometime in my life. Yeah,、so、Rome, of course, Paris, Berlin in Germany, Barcelona in Spain. But if you go to those, you'll be missing out on some other great ones, including our subject. 
Yeah, exactly. So most people tend to think of the western part of mainland Europe or London in England, but look a little further east to Eastern Europe, and you'll find the Hungarian metropolis known as the Paris of the East, Budapest. So we're talking about this city in Hungary called. Budapest, and we call it a metropolis. A metropolis is basically an urban area that's composed of several,、uh, like one major city, and usually a few smaller、uh, metropolitan areas or、uh, towns that surround it. For example, Taipei is a metropolis composed、mm-hmm. of Taipei and New Taipei City, and、uh, according to who you ask, it might include Zilong, Taoyuan, that sort of thing. Yeah, so we see this city abounds with ancient history, modern culture, and stunning architectural marvels you won't want to miss. If something abounds with something else, there's a lot of it. There is plenty of it. There are a lot of things to see wherever you look. You know, you're not going to be just sticking to one area. You're not going to just see a few things and then okay, that's Budapest done. No, there are lots of things to see from ancient history, beautiful buildings, modern culture, great food that we'll get to later on.、Mm-hmm. There are a large number of things, and they're everywhere. Yeah, exactly. You could say it's abundant with.、Mm. I think that's the noun form. Well, abundant would be yeah,、oh, the adjective. adjective yes. You're right. You're right. Adjective. My bad. So. Uh, the city abounds with ancient history, modern culture, and stunning architectural marvels you won't want to miss. So, if we're talking about architectural marvels, basically we're talking about beautiful buildings, and stunning is one way to describe them. If something is stunning, basically it's so beautiful or so amazing that it makes you kind of stunned.、Mm. It makes you unable to speak or unable to. Form your thoughts into a coherent, you know, way of expressing how you feel about it. If you are stunned, it's almost like you're shocked by it, but in a good way. So if something is stunning, it's like, wow, really, really, wow. Mm. Mm. It does sound good. So,、mm-hmm. where do we start our trip to Budapest? The article says a perfect place to start a tour of Budapest is Castle Hill, crowned by the massive Buda Castle.、Mm-hmm. So you can see how Buda is part of the name of the city. Maybe it was one of the older towns that became the metropolis. Yes. And we've got a great big castle, massive, of course. On top of a hill, it's crowned by this hill is crowned by this, so it's like the hill is wearing this great big castle as a crown. Yeah, exactly. And you are right that Buda was one of the two towns that became Budapest. They were called, guess what, Buda and Pest. Oh, right. <laughs> Buda and Pest. They became Budapest. So yeah, when they were joined together, there was a big castle named Buda Castle, and the new one was built in you know the last few centuries. But there was an older one, as the next sentence says. This was once the site of an older fort that protected the city against attacks by Mongol and Tatar forces. Now, if you're wondering who in the world we're talking about, the Mongols should actually be familiar to people with、uh, who have some familiarity with Chinese history, and that is a group of people who are from northern East Asia and、uh, Central Asia, and they formed a bunch of tribes that got together and they took over a lot of places. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and the Tatars are kind of a similar group. There was a, a group existing before the Mongols called、mm-hmm. a, 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 again a group of kind of horse riding plains people. Yeah, they're all they're a Turkic people. Yeah,、uh, so they which is a group again. We're talking northern and central Asia, a particular、yeah. ethnic group. They're still found in Russia, in the Ukraine, in other parts. Yeah, other probably、countries. Kazakhstan. Exactly,、yeah. Turkestan, all those parts. All the stands. Of, yeah, all those parts of the world, and it. In times in the past, great armies of them kind of migrated both east and west、yeah. as far as kind of China and Japan one way, and into Hungary and other parts of Europe the other way. So of course, the local people who were themselves eastern invaders. Further back, right,、um, had to build castles or forts. We've got here a kind of castle to protect their city from further invasions. Yeah, exactly. And it's sort of crazy to think that the Mongols and Tatars could have gone as far west as Europe、mm-hmm. when they're originally from close to China,、mm-hmm. but、uh, they did. They they made a long, long way. They conquered a lot of land, and they almost conquered Hungary, but didn't quite make it. 
So yeah, the old palace protected the old fort protected against their attacks, and then we have a newer one. And there's something interesting about it. Hidden beneath the modern palace is an underground labyrinth, which originally served as a network of bomb shelters and cellars. You can get the hint from the word network here, but a labyrinth is sort of like a giant maze. It's Something that you're trying to find your way around in, but it is not easy. It's intentionally there to either get you lost or maybe just be sort of difficult to solve. So a labyrinth is like a large maze, and it's a network of bomb shelters and cellars.、Mm, a cellar is essentially an underground room. It's a place that could be used for storing things that you don't want to get too warm or you don't want to get them out in the open. So it's a place where you might. Or food, wine, things like that.、Mm -hmm. Think of a basement. What would you put down in a basement? But these cellars are often cold, so、yes. it's a good way to store things、uh, that you just don't want right now. Yeah, exactly. So cellars would be used to. Store a lot of things you want to keep cool, and probably are still used for that a little bit today. Yeah, there's plenty of cellars around. You'll find, you know,、uh, even a pub will have a cellar where it keeps the、mm -hmm. beer barrels until then required. Yeah, my house had a cellar when I was growing up. There we go. So, what a cool place to go and explore and wander around this great big underground labyrinth or maze. From you know this modern palace, so it's going to be all kind of stone passageways and、mm -hmm. hidden corners, and it's going to be dark and kind of interesting. Yeah, we see in the article it's recommended that tourists explore this dark maze of tunnels. So there's a synonym there, maze labyrinth. On a tour lit exclusively by oil lamps, so yeah, don't go down there. Turn the lights on and have a look around. No, yeah, that light, kind、uh, of spoils the mystery. Yeah, and the atmosphere. Light. Get a guide to light an oil lamp, and he'll take you around there, and you'll feel like you're not just going underground. You're going back in time、mm -hmm. to when people would have walked around these dark tunnels. You'll only be able to see a few feet in front of you. Yeah, it'll be all very atmospheric and interesting, and kind of. Spooky, but、yeah. we say it's recommended that tourists do this. It's a suggestion. It's a strong piece of advice. And this grammar, it's recommended that is a kind of a sentence structure or a, a phrase structure we use to give this kind of advice. You could swap out this verb. It's suggested that. It's recommended that. It's advised. That. So here, the it doesn't actually refer to anything. It's a kind of a dummy pronoun used to complete the sentence, and whatever is being suggested or recommended follows the that. It's a noun clause, something that's introduced after that. This is what we think is a good idea. This is what's suggested. This is what is recommended. Mm、hmm. So yeah, I think that sounds really fun. I would love to go on a tour with oil lamps only. I like spooky things like that.、Mm. So now we're moving on to our next tourist location in Hungary. We have. Gone through the labyrinth at Buda Castle, and we are going upward and outward.、Mm -hmm. So, with its neo-Gothic dome and spires challenging the sky, the Hungarian Parliament Building is one of the most majestic sights in Budapest. It's true. This is a very beautiful building. So, we know basically what it could look like by describing it as neo-Gothic. Now, neo means new, so it's usually talking about a revival of a certain style. And Gothic is a style from the Middle Ages in most of Europe, where they liked to make things very pointy, very tall, and you would see archways that had a point at the top, and the things would usually be very, very decorated. So you would see statues on the outsides of buildings, you would see sort of decorations on the tops of towers, things like that. So neo-Gothic architecture, you can see a lot of it even now.、Um, you can go to Italy, Germany, all these different countries, and see Gothic or neo-Gothic buildings.、Mm -hmm. So we've got it's got a dome,、mm -hmm. so a big rounded roof as、yes. part of it, and it's got spires, which are thin, pointy towers. Yes. Essentially, that 
poke up. Often you might have a dome, and you've got four spires around it.、Mm-hmm. You often put them on the top of a tower,、uh, and you sometimes can go inside and walk around a winding staircase. But、mm-hmm. it just gets narrower and narrower. There are <laughs>、yeah. numerous churches all over the UK that have spires that、yeah. just pop off on the top of the buildings. It's part of the Gothic design. It's that sharp look. It's the tall look. So when、yeah. you're building in that kind of Gothic or neo Gothic style, you'll want some spires on top of the towers. You don't want them to have flat roofs. You want pointed ones. Yeah, you want a very pointy and kind of pointing toward heaven almost.、Mm. So, what is this neo Gothic building with all these domes and this dome and all these spires? It's the Hungarian Parliament building. So we know now from the word what it is for. The Parliament is the Basically, the government of Hungary, and it's the group of people who will make decisions about laws.、Um, they might, you know, be elected, or they might be chosen by other members of the government.、Uh, I'm not clear on how the parliament works. You would know better, being from a parliamentary. Country. Yeah, we have a we because we still have a queen and,、mm-hmm. and it's a constitutional monarchy. So maybe maybe Hungary still has a a king or something. I think so. It's、um, so a parliament is kind of a government in a country that still has a sort of a ruler. But in these days, we don't have kings and queens actually ruling. Yeah, they're just symbols. So maybe maybe Hungary has changed since this was built, but it's still called the Parliament Building. Uh, because that's where the people who are elected as the government, the leaders of the people, meet to make laws. It's kind of like the Lifa UN here,、ah. but just slightly different terms being used depending on what the structure of the country is. Got it. But it's a government building and it's majestic. So it's amazing to see. It's got a great deal of majesty, which is the noun form. When we think of something that's majestic, it's going to be. Big. It's going to be imposing. It's going to be impressive. It's going to attract your attention and make you go wow just because of its kind of size and the power it communicates.、Uh, so it's not just about beauty, although that is part of it, but it's also wow. This is really big. Taipei One O One is majestic. Because、Agreed. it's huge. It is huge. When you stand underneath and look up at it, you almost break your neck. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. So we'll find out a bit more about some of the other buildings in just a moment. But right now, we're going to take a short break. Hi everybody! Welcome back to our article about Budapest, and we're talking here about the Hungarian Parliament Building, and we、mm-hmm. find that it was inaugurated on the city's thousand-year anniversary in 1896, and boasts hundreds of rooms as well as Hungary's crown jewels. So, if something's inaugurated, it means it's opened officially. It may have been already open and maybe even used, but there's kind of a ceremony. We're saying this is its first official use. We're maybe cutting a ribbon, something、yeah. like that. And this was done on the thousand-year anniversary of the city. So, the city was founded in eight ninety-six. Right. A thousand years later, they officially opened the Parliament Building. It's got hundreds of rooms, but it's not just for the government. We see that it's got Hungary's crown. Jewels, the jewels owned and worn by previous kings of Hungary, and people could presumably go and visit them.、Mm-hmm, yeah, so just like in London, how you can visit、uh, where are the crown jewels located? Tower、there? of London, I think. Ah,、uh, yeah,、wrong. I think you're right. I think I remember seeing them there. So you can go and visit the crown jewels there, and they also boast hundreds of rooms in this building, which means probably there are places for people to stay, or you know, rooms with different purposes, like for meetings, things like that. So it's a huge building, and.、Uh, Very very cool to see, and now we're moving on to another really cool place to see, and it has a different style as well. For a splendid example of neo Romanesque construction, head to Fisherman's Bastion, one of Budapest's most popular tourist sites. So Fisherman's Bastion, as you can guess, this was used a lot by fishermen. There used to be guilds, according to. 
Uh, your profession, your job. So, if you had a certain job, you would be in a certain sort of club called a guild, and you would help each other out. So, Fisherman's Bastion was supposed to be the site of the Fisherman's Guild, and it's where they actually mounted a defense against、uh, invaders one time. Yeah, bastion is another word for a strong place, a、yes. fort. Yeah, and it looks like one if you ever see it.、Mm -hmm. It's neo Romanesque, and this is. Like neo gothic, neo means new, so it's also a callback to an older style. Roman esque means like Romans, so it's not from Rome, but sort of imitating the style of the Romans. So it's inspired by this like 11th and 12th century style of building, where the walls are very thick, they're very square.、Um, the windows are usually in the shape of a rounded arch rather than a pointed arch, like neo gothic, and. Everything looks more blocky. It's not quite as pointy. You can think of castles, very old castles, the way that they usually look with the blocky-looking ramparts and the gates and all that. That's pretty Romanesque or neo-Romanesque in this case. Okay, so what do we find out about this tourist site? We see a bronze statue of Hungary's first king, Saint Stephen, can be found there. Along with superb views of the Danube River that streams through the city,、mm -hmm. so we've got a statue of a king, and the statue is made of bronze. Bronze is a metal that's mostly copper, with a little bit of tin and a few other metals. It was kind of one of those important metals in history that came before iron was used. But for a while, everybody was using bronze to make things: weapons, armor, statues, furniture. It's fairly strong, but fairly easy. To kind of manipulate and move and work with, so it is still used for things like art and statues. And of course, the third place in Olympic sports get a bronze medal、exactly. after the gold and silver. Mm -hmm. So bronze, very useful metal, and of course, since it's easy to make into statues, they made a statue of the first king out of it. And along with that, you can find superb views of the Danube River that streams through the city. Now, superb, as you might guess by the fact that it includes super, means very, very nice, wonderful, sort of chef's kiss, like mwah, very, very good. When you see something and you say it's superb, it's Very nearly perfect, so that's one way that you can describe something that is wonderful and makes you feel like this is really, really great. And this is a view of the Danube River. The Danube is Europe's second longest river. It goes all the way from the Black Forest in Germany through to the Black Sea between like Ukraine and Turkey. Wow! So it's a huge, long river. And being a river, a lot of cities are built around or near it. Yes. I think Vienna is on the Danube as well. A bunch of others. So Budapest. Pretty ordinarily for the time was built around this big river, the、yeah. Danube. And there's a very famous classical music piece that、uh, mm. is called the Blue Danube Waltz,、mm -hmm. which is da 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 da. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Yeah, if you guys have heard that one, that's about this river.、Mm -hmm. Interesting fact. So let's move on then from some of these tourist sites to get some food in us. The article says if you're feeling starved after all that sightseeing, the lively central market hall with its gleaming tiled roof should be next on your list. So we describe the roof as gleaming. That means、mm -hmm. it's reflecting the sunlight or any other lights in such a way that it shines back. It looks as though it's glowing. So it's presumably made of either some kind of polished. Metal or ceramics, clay, something like that, in a way that reflects the sunlight and make it look as though it's all lit up. So very、yeah. beautiful. We could talk about if you had a dinner table full of nicely polished silver knives and forks, they would be gleaming. Yeah, so you could also say it's glittering. Like、mm -hmm. if there's lots of little tiny lights that kind of blink on and off, and、uh, like glitter. So tiled roof probably means that it's got some beautiful, probably ceramic tiles up there that have been polished, and like you said, they reflect the sunlight. They gleam in the sun. 
Now, what can you find in the Central Market Hall? Of course, you can find lots of food. So it says its vendors offer various traditional Hungarian delights like sausages, goulash, and dough-based treats called langos. I'm getting hungry just reading this sentence. So what we're talking about here is not restaurants per se. You can't go, you know, say sit down and get a table for two, but you can walk around and get food from vendors. Vendors are people who usually have. Stands, or you could say it's even the store itself.、Um, they are people who sell things usually at a market where people will、um, buy things from them and then move on. So you could have flower vendors, you could have vendors of souvenirs,、um, and of course vendors of food. Of course, at night markets in Taiwan, usually the people who are selling things there are vendors. And if you go to a night market or this central market hall area, you'll buy some traditional Hungarian delights. Delight is here used to mean a food, a nice food, some kind of good snack, a dish, something tasty. Of course, if it delights you, it'll make you feel delighted. You'll feel great. You'll feel、mm-hmm. pleased to eat this thing. So we often use delights to mean the kind of special food of a different country or of a different region. They have some wonderful. Wonderful sweet delights in this part of the country. They have some tasty snacks and other delights in this part of the country, and so on. We have a few examples here. Sausages, pretty simple. Yeah. Goulash is a, a soup or stew made of meat and vegetables. Kind of traditional sort of shepherd food, just like boil up everything we've got and、exactly. eat it. But it's kind of got fancier and had spices and other things added over the years, and、yes. it is Hungary's national dish. Yeah, and I think goulash in particular. Particular usually contains paprika, which、mm. is like this red, very, very red, and flavorful kind of pepper.、Mm. Yeah, and then they have dough-based treats called langos. Now these I have researched are fried flatbread. Okay. Yeah. So basically, think of like a pizza bread, but、mm. you deep fry it and then you top it with all sorts of different things. Sounds delicious. Does. So what else have we got in this area? We see nearby are Budapest's renowned Turkish bathhouses. The Rudas Bath and Gellert Spa have delighted visitors with their medicinal spring waters for centuries.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've got the names there. They're Turkish bathhouses. Turkish baths are different than it's sort of close to a hot spring, but. Yeah, sometimes sit in sort fancier. of yeah, fancier.、Uh, it just is that style of going to the baths from Turkey, kind of thing that was、yeah. introduced into Europe from Turkey, and they've been delighting people. There's that word again as an adjective or a verb, delighting visitors with、mm-hmm. their medicinal spring waters. Medicinal means it has some properties that are good for your health, good for your skin, maybe good for your bones. It'll cure some little aches and pains you might have. Often, because of the minerals in the water,、yes. they're actually good for your health to sit in. Just like some of the ones up in Beito or down、uh, in different parts of Taiwan's east coast. That's right. So if you go to a bath with these minerals, it could help with you know things like circulation, your blood health, your bone health, like you said, aches and pains. And they've been delighting people for centuries. It means they've been open for a long time. And A soak in one of these baths makes for the perfect way to unwind at the end of a day out in dynamic Budapest. We're talking about a soak here. So usually, when you're talking about baths, you're talking about soaking. To soak or have a soak, which is the noun form here, is to basically get in the water and just lay there. So if you have a soak, it means you're Draw up a bath. It's nice and warm. You get in, and then you stay in and just enjoy the water until your skin gets all wrinkly and you feel like getting out. Yeah, it's not a quick wash to no, clean yourself. It's a it's, relax. Yeah, you're basically almost falling asleep, just enjoying it. And that's why we say people use it to unwind. To unwind means relax. You've been kind of wound up. You've been kind of slightly tight with activity or pressure. Maybe at the end of a working week, you like to unwind. You want to relax from all your working stuff. Let go all of that stress and pressure. So if you think of a spring wound up, it's tight, and then you unwind it, and it's nice and loose and relaxed.、Mm-hmm. And that's how to end a great day. And that's also how we're going to end our article. 
That's right. So there are many more things you can do in Budapest, but you will have to look them up yourself because that's all we've got. So for English Digest, I am Kat, and I'm Pat. We'll see you next time. Bye.